Hello, hello. Here we go for another episode of GRWM Get Reporting with Me. We're going to focus today on an IUD, intrauterine device, and this is going to be focused on tips and tricks how to characterize IUD position on ultrasound. Is the IUD correctly positioned or is it incorrectly positioned? Get Reporting with me. I'm Dr. Matthew Leonardi. I'm here to teach you how to interpret ultrasound. We'll cover everything from the basics to advanced techniques. So whether you're a student, a healthcare professional, or just curious about ultrasounds, I hope you'll join me for the reporting ride. Before delving into the case, I want to clarify my nomenclature. I'm very um, specific about stating whether something is correctly positioned or incorrectly positioned. I don't talk about placement because placement is something that's a bit more um, the act of placing it and sometimes an IUD can be correctly placed but then shift in, in position. So what we're trying to evaluate on ultrasound is the current position. Is it correct or incorrect? Not whether it was placed correctly or incorrectly. Though, of course, if it is correctly positioned, then it was very likely correctly placed as well. When something is incorrectly positioned, that is when I will want to characterize exactly how is it incorrectly positioned. So as we can see from image number one, we have uh, transabdominal views uh, and we have a uterus here, an antiverted uterus. If those of you have watched some of my previous videos, uh, remember we don't require a full bladder for our transabdominal ultrasound as it is very uncomfortable for patients and often doesn't provide much additional um, clarity as most of the image quality comes from our transvaginal pictures. So we have an antiverted uterus, in transverse, there's our uterus there. We're not really getting much in the way of IUD assessment yet on the transabdominal views. Right over here, some flow, same, same on the left side. Nothing dramatic jumping out at us on the ovaries on the transabdominal views. And here's a sweep through Let's just pause on that to see what we can try and appreciate. So there's an ovary. Uterus is kind of in view over here. Clearly more of the focus of this sweep is the ovaries, ovary to ovary, kind of bypassing the uterus. And then we move on to the transvaginal views. So we'll go to those transvaginal views. So using the uh, direction of our sonographers, the annotation on the screen. We know that this is a sagittal sweep uh, from right to left. There's a little bit of an obliqueness to this particular sweep as we're starting with more fundus and we're ending more with the cervix. But let's pause on this and come back here. So starting about here, this is gonna be right cornua, bit right cornua, not quite all the way there central, and then cervix. So um, not my favorite cine loop. Let's see what comes next. Okay, so we have an inferior to superior sweep. This one's a lot better in terms of the um, achieving what is uh, labeled on the screen. So if we pause it, we go back to the beginning. We have inferior, so cervix is just here. We're getting a bit of a coronal view through the cervix. And then we have this nice view of the uterus in transverse. And as you can see, we have the IUD centered there in the middle of the picture. So we, this part is a bit shadowed and then we come to here and that's a little bit better. What you'll notice in this particular cine is uh, the junctional zone actually is really well uh, demarcated, very regular, very uh, noticeably hypochoic uh, compared to the uh, surrounding myometrium. Let's come back to this one for a second and pause on it for a moment. So we have that right cornua and then our body of the IUD comes into view here. Follow it downwards to the um, internal cervical os. So we're not really getting a whole lot of the uh, left arm in this view as uh, the sweep is not exactly a sagittal cornua to cornua sweep. Let's see what comes next. Okay, so we have 
measurements of the uterus, which is a very typical sized uterus. You can see here my sonographer has elected to um, use a line that it has an angle to it, not to measure an angle, but to measure this distance plus this distance rather than a distance straight across. One could do this. So you can see how we're getting a, a quite a different number here. It's 81.5 versus 93 in length. So this is going to be a much more accurate representation. Um, you could even probably be a bit more accurate and do a bit of a, a trace. Kind of more like that. And we can see here that uh, we have actually a little bit of a higher number as well. So there's obviously a fold on the length there. But um, this is a pretty accurate representation. We have our anterior posterior measurement here, which is fine, 45, pretty typical. In this view, we have a little bit of a collapsed bladder there and nothing else jumping out at me in this picture is relevant. Transverse measurement, good, 61, pretty normal sized uterus. Uh, in terms of volume and uh, you can see already in this picture just like we did in the cine loop of the transverse uterus inferior to superior that iud body there the stem is very center and you have a really nice acoustic shadow coming from there here we have another sweep you see this is a much better sweep the gain is a bit high on this one but uh, that's okay so let's come back to the right. We haven't labeled this, but to based on our typical um, patterns, we're gonna assume that this is a right to left. So what we can see here is the tip of the arm on the right side. And if we stay on that, as I scroll towards the center, we have a bit of shadowing here. Staying on it, staying on it, shadowing, and then we come to the body. And there in the body center is this very classic uh, drape, curtain-like shadow. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures to acquire with an IUD is the full length body of the IUD with the full uh, drapery, the full shadow, the acoustic shadow that's uh, achieved from the top of the IUD to the most inferior aspect of the IUD. And that's a really nice view to achieve in your nice sagittal view of your uterus to show that it is going to be quite uh, centered in the cavity. But if we keep going beyond that, so remember that's the right side centered here, and then follow this shadow, this is going to be our shadow of our left arm and it's there, that bright white spot is the arm, more shadow, there's more of that arm coming, and then it ends there. And that's where obviously that uterus ends as well. So one of the main uh, tricks that I use uh, in 2D ultrasound is this curtain of acoustic shadow coming off of the body of the IUD. And then I use the cine loop to track the very thin shadow from one arm to the center, and then from the center, the body, to the other arm, very thin shadow that is there in that sagittal sweep. So that's a really nice sweep there. Here we have a accidental cine loop, I think, so we'll skip over that. Uh, here we have an endometrial measurement. So a little bit interesting just from a clinical relevance standpoint. This is a Mirena IUD, which is a progestin IUD, levonorgestrel. And, uh, and this IUD has been there for a few months now. And so we would usually expect endometrial thinning to occur with the IUD, almost achieving a state of amenorrhea for patients. Uh, and, uh, and this patient has not achieved a state of amenorrhea, is still having spotting. So this uh, thickened endometrium of 9.9, .9, which is not thickened from a objective number standpoint, but it is a little bit uh, thicker than we would expect with a Mirena IUD present. So, you know, maybe this uh, Mirena IUD is not working as effectively in this patient as it may in another who it uh, thins that endometrium, ultimately achieving a state of amenorrhea. Maybe there could also be something in the cavity of the uterus that is of relevance that may be further contributing to the bleeding, the ongoing bleeding. Um, in the cine loops that we've seen so far, I haven't really seen much in the way of uh, clear evidence of intracavitary pathology, um, but it is something to think about. When you have an IUD, it definitely is harder to evaluate for intracavitary pathology because of course you have a lot of shadowing coming from the IUD. 
and then you have this very large structure that's uh, just hanging out in the middle of the uterus, um, potentially obstructing your view of pathology. So as I scan through, I'm looking for uh, heterogeneity or irregularity, and this is a very overall homogeneous uh, hyperechoic endometrium. I don't see any particular areas of cystic spaces. I don't see any um, specifically hyperechoic areas relative to hypoechoic areas, which could represent an endometrial polyp. Uh, there's uh, no hypoechoic uh, fan-shaped shadowing areas that could represent a, a fibroid. So I'm not, I'm not really um, thinking that there is any intracavitary pathology here, but it is something for us to think about down the tract as well. If this patient, for example, doesn't have resolution of bleeding with the IUD, why? Why? Is it that, for example, the dose isn't enough, which is a bit unusual? Is it that there is intracavitary pathology? So um, we have to think about that. Another clue that you can use, not for IUD placement position, uh, is uh, color on the endometrium to look for uh, feeding vessels that could be uh, uh, feeding a polyp, for example. Good. My sonographer has clearly recognized the gain on this was too high, so we've dropped it, and this is a lot better now. All right, so here we have a 3D. Let's uh, talk through this for a second. So we have a sagittal view here, we have a transverse view here, a coronal view here, and a 3D view coronally here. This is the render of all three of these images. The center point of this image corresponds to the X's on these screens here. And uh, what is acquired from a volume standpoint, from a 3D volume standpoint, is whatever is within this region of interest here, here, and here. What, uh, what we're seeing is the um, front of the region of interest here is delineated by this green line here. And so it's not uh, a box, a, a rectangular box here. It's a bit uh, different shaped because of that uh, position of the green line there. And so what we can see in the output here is the shape of the uterus. This is the cavity, and you can see a bit of the junctional zone around here, a little bit on the fundal aspect as well. And you can see the IUD. I'm going to zoom this up, uh, but, uh, but you can appreciate the body of the IUD shadow here, and you can sort of appreciate those arms there and there. Uh, this is going to be uh, very bright white here. Very likely the strings are showing here. So not my favorite render of uh, the IUD, but it's decent. And I would say from our 2D views, we have achieved uh, already uh, enough confidence that this IUD is correctly positioned. All right, moving on to the ovaries. We have a label here, right at Nexa. For those of you that are a bit curious uh, about how I find my ovaries, I am a firm believer in standardization, trying to do the same thing every single time as that helps you with uh, routine and not forgetting stuff. So I always find my uterus in transverse and then I shift off to the ovary side that I want, in this case, the right side from the cornua. It's literally a direct shift with my hand, transverse sweep, fundus shift, and then I sweep up and down in that region there. You can see here the beginning of this clip starts with the ovary, but it's very likely that the uh, sonographer who was scanning found the ovary in that uh, specific technique. Um, and you can see how in that sweep you can find the cornua. It's just the other direction. So in this case, if you started with the cornua, you'd have to go in the other direction, which is, um, which is going to be in the uh, inferior direction, as we saw the ovary, kind of uh, here's cervix. So there's the ovary. So the ovary is hanging out pretty low. So there's the ovary, cervix comes into view, ovary's gone, so the ovary's hanging down. It's not sitting on top of the uterus as it can in some cases. The iliac in this video is uh, right about here. And so the iliac is always going to be lateral to your ovary. And so on the right ovary, it's gonna be left of the ovary, and on the left ovary, it's gonna be right of the uh, ovary. So that's a landmark that you can use as well. Both of the landmarks of the uterus on the medial aspect of the ovary and the iliac on the lateral aspect of the ovary are going to be central in your success. Here we have the ovary uh, measured in three orthogonal planes. It's a normal shaped 
uh, incised ovary. And uh, we can see some nice uh, antral follicles here, really great. Throwing color doppler on the ovary, normal pattern. Now sweep through the ovary, which is always a really important thing. Uh, ideally, we do sweep with color flow and without color flow, but uh, in the absence of any pathology, it's fine just to grab it with color or without really. Um, one of the things that I do almost always is a brief count, particularly if I, if I have a subjective concern for polycystic ovarian morphology, more than 20 follicles. And I did a count on this already um, prior to reviewing this in real time. Uh, and so this, I think, has uh, less than 20. It has about 14, 15 uh, follicles. Here we go to the left side, starting with a sweep here, really nice. You can see it's, again, uterus, ovary, just next to that uh, uterus there. So go to the fundus and transverse, shift off to the side, sweep up and down. You'll almost always find it. This picture here is, uh, is getting a little bit blurred on the... Uh, on the more superior aspect, the further away aspect and the posterior aspect. So not the greatest capture there, um, but in this sweep, you can actually see that uh, posterior aspect quite crisply here. So this is one of the great benefits of the cines is I can sweep through that to make sure I've seen everything I need to see to feel confident in the final conclusion. So normal size, very similar to the other size as well. I did, when I first reviewed this, I did have a subjective concern about uh, polycystic ovarian morphology because it just seems like it's pretty filled with follicles. Um, but again, when I did a count, it was definitely under uh, 20 and the volume is under 10 milliliters, which is also uh, another marker of polycystic ovarian morphology. Okay, so that's the end of this particular scan. And so just to conclude, some tips and tricks on IUD position are the uh, large shadow, the curtain of the shadow that is yielded from the body of the IUD. This should be achieved in your sagittal view of your uterus. Let's come back to that just for a quick review. Pause there. That's that shadow. Another tip is to see the whole body in the sagittal view, achieving that curtain. And then another tip on 2D is to follow the shadow of the arms going from one cornea to the next, following it closely, making sure that line continues almost through the image, in and out of the image as you're scanning through it. And so those are some of the basic tricks on a, a 2D ultrasound to make sure that the IUD is correctly positioned. We'll definitely have some opportunities to review incorrectly positioned IUDs uh, through this uh, GRWM series. So hopefully you'll be able to subscribe to the channel and when those videos are released, you'll have a chance to watch them. Thanks so much for your attention. Comment below, like and subscribe and see you next time. Thanks.